Welcome to Art Stars Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available, or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explores. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on, or has writing on the back, or is ripped, and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself, or crumpling it, or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time, because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're gonna take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. This week we're going to be continuing our exploration of alphabets. My explorations in my space are going to use the Latin alphabet. So the alphabet that's used in English and goes from A to Z, but it isn't just used in English. It's also used in French, Italian, German, and lots of other languages. You can use this alphabet if this is the one you know, but you might know another alphabet like the Greek alphabet or Hangul or acrylic. If you know another kind of alphabet, you're absolutely welcome to use it while you explore along with us today. For today's exploration, do you have any paper? At Art Stars Explorers, I love to encourage you to go into your recycling bin and to find whatever paper is available. It can be paper that has things on it, that have cuts out of it, that are crinkled, that are small, that are big. It doesn't really matter because everything that we explore together today isn't for keeps. So when we're all done exploring and playing today, we're going to put that paper right back into the recycling bin. That doesn't mean you couldn't use new paper from a sketchbook, or if you have some nice paper available to use, some printer paper, that's great. But I encourage you whenever possible to use recycled paper when we're practicing and exploring to help you remember that it's just for fun. It's just for trying out. It's just for experimenting. And so it doesn't really matter if it turns out great or not. It's not for keeps. Do you have any mark making tools? A mark making tool is anything that makes a mark. That could be a pencil, pencil crayon, crayon, or mud, if you had permission. Anything that makes a mark on the page is a mark making tool. When I explore with you for explorers, I always use my markers because it has a really high contrast. It's really easy to see, but you can use whatever mark making tool you have available. You'll see I have a dotted line here and I've also put scissors. When we get to the part of the exploration where you feel you want to cut something or take something apart, if you have a pair of scissors that you can safely use or you're making with a grown up who can use a pair of scissors, then great. But if you've explored with me in the past, you know I love to rip paper. So if there's a part where we're going to need to cut something, I'll probably just rip it because I love to rip paper. So for this week in exploring alphabets, I thought we could start by being inspired by letters. And what I mean by that is um, getting ideas from letters, starting something. Have you ever sat down and gone, I really want to make something or I want to play or make some art or draw something or paint something and the something you can't figure out. You don't really know what you should paint. You know you want to do it, but you don't know what you want to make. I thought what we could do is we could um, use letters to help create prompts or starting points to start exploring together today. Just like I explored last week where we used our name to start looking at um, the letters as, um, as a mark that we make. I want us to again start with using our name. And so I'm gonna rip, there you go, this small piece of paper right here. And I'm gonna write my name. And if you have a piece of paper and a mark making tool, I encourage you to do the same thing. So there we go, there's my name. So already I'm ahead because the page was blank before 
and now there are marks on it. So I could just go from there and could just keep writing my name or writing these three letters of my name over and over again until I have an idea. But what I thought we could do first is we could play a chance game with our letters. And so what I mean by that is I'm going to rip and you can cut each one of the letters of my name into separate pieces. If you have a really long name, this might take longer. And if you wrote smaller, it might help to use scissors. But I have a short name and I, uh, it was pretty easy for me to rip this paper. So what do I mean by a chance game? I mean that I'm gonna take these three letters and I'm gonna shuffle them up. I don't know what letter is gonna, ha gonna come up. I made mine pretty big, so maybe I'll fold it in half or in quarters. There we go. And I'm gonna put these three pieces of paper into my hand. And just like a pair of, or a, um, a dice, right? Where you're not sure what letter is, or sorry, what number is going to come up. So the whole idea of playing with chance, I didn't know a one was gonna come up. Uh, six. <laughs> it was a three. So I don't know what's gonna happen. Same thing here. I know one, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six. I know all the numbers on this die. I know all the letters in my hand, but I don't know which one is going to be chosen. So I'm gonna go, okay, shake, 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 and I'm gonna drop one. There we go. And what letter showed up? ba -da. Y. All right. So let's go back to being inspired by letters. We want to draw something. We, we want to make something, but we don't, we don't know what. I'm going to move some of these things aside so I have a bit more space. You know who I am. Chance game with letters. I'm going to be inspired by the letters. And then I'm going to move my alphabet to the side. There we go. Okay, so the letter Y. So we could start by just drawing a Y or whatever letter you picked. Did you draw it big or did you draw it small? What happens when you fill the page with nothing but the letter that you drew? Let's go for it. Are you going to draw them big, small? Are you going to draw them in the same direction? Are you going to rotate the page? Are you going to draw them in caps or all capitals? Are you going to draw some smaller versions? Are you going to draw them in the same style? Or maybe you'll do some in bubble letters or some in one color, or some in multiple colors. However you choose to fill your page with your letters is up to you. When you feel like you've filled up your page as much as you can with letters, or when you're feeling good, stop and look at the page. What do you notice? Do you get any ideas as you see the page or as you look at the page? Do you see the letter? Or do you see something else? 
If you still really can only see the letter, I encourage you to go back into the page and keep drawing. Even if you get the page so full that you start putting the letter on top of letters you've already drawn, try to keep drawing until you can barely see that it was the letter that you started with. So it just becomes a bunch of marks that you happen to make because of the letter you picked. Okay, I'm gonna go a little faster. Fast and slow is another one. Do your, your letters look different when you draw them fast versus when you draw them slow? Okay. What do you notice? What do you see? How do you feel after drawing all those letters? Are you starting to get an idea? How does your body feel after making the same mark over and over again? Does the page still look like a bunch of letters or does it start to look like something else? For me, I'm not seeing the letter Y anymore. I'm seeing a whole bunch of branches. And that could be because I have it on a brown piece of paper. That could be because the paper is kind of textured and dirty in places. That could be because the paper is really busy and it looks very dense, like branches, like a forest, like a bunch of trees together, or branches that fell to the ground. I really like how busy it is. That's why I crumpled the page. I wanted more marks. Just by drawing the Y over and over again, I started to think about the ground and textures and how sharp branches are. So I started to get an idea simply by filling the page with a letter. And I didn't have to pick a specific letter. I played a chance game to decide what letter it was gonna be, but maybe I'm not having an idea from that one and maybe it's time to try another letter. So I'm gonna put the Y to the side I got two more letters. And you can do more. In fact, that's what I'm going to do because I want more than just K and Y. So I'm going to pick my favorite food, which is cabbage, which ends up having two letters in common with my name, and I don't need two Bs. So now I'm going to add C, B, G, and E to my chance game. You could play this game as well with a, a friend or a classmate or another grown up who does know another kind of alphabet besides the Latin alphabet. And you could mix in different, different letters. Um, and then um, when they come up, you could, you could use them as your mark making. Even if it's not a alphabet that you regularly use, you could take a look at the new letter and see how you could fill the page with this different kind of letter. I'm going to do that. So I don't, I don't speak or write um, in Spanish, but I do know, because I do know a bunch of words that are borrowed from Spanish that have um, 
oh, I can't remember what the technical name is for the squiggly line that sits on top of the, of the, um, the end. I'll have to look that up later. But um, I know that jalapeno peppers have, have this line over top of it. And so that's why I don't say it, mm, I say it, mm. um, so I'm going to add this to my chance game. So I added a letter that wasn't in my original alphabet. And you could add numbers as well, but because we're playing with uh, alphabets this week, um, those are the, those are the uh, letters that I've chosen. But there's no reason why another week that you were exploring, you couldn't do numbers or you couldn't do uh, other kinds of symbols um, or little kind of icons or pictures that you want to quickly draw to give you inspiration when you're not sure what you want to make. But this is nice and easy. They're all ready mates. We already, somebody else has already designed what these letters look like. So I don't really have to don't really have to think too much. All right, one letter. Which one showed up? <laughs> I added all those letters and then I still ended up using a letter in my name. So there's an A. And I could do it in a lowercase a, but I could also do it in uppercase a. In fact, this time, I'm going to fill the page with both capitals and lowercase letters. Okay, let's go. really freeing about knowing the mark that you're going to make. You don't really have to think about it too much other than the fact that you're going to be doing that kind of mark. You could slow it down though and be really intentional about it and go, okay, I'm going to do an A um, with an ascender this time. Real slow. Look for the different places where maybe you haven't drawn before. Your hand starts to get tired. Maybe you could try your non-dominant hand. Oh, I did that one backwards. That's funny. Oh, maybe maybe that's what you want to do. Here, I'm going to start drawing my A backwards. Whoops, <laughs> that was forward. So, oh, kind of looks like a D now, but it's kind of the same shape. Right? There's there's no mistakes in the exploring. Okay, so my A is like this, so if I went like this, there we go, that's opposite. I did it backwards. Okay, I'm using up all the spaces this time. I think, I think I'm ready to start drawing over top of everything. Just filling up the page, making some marks. Doesn't necessarily have to look like anything in particular just yet. I'm gonna get some ideas when I'm all done. So the only thing that I need to focus on is adding the letter. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do some cursive. I'm gonna do that down here too. You are welcome to copy all of my ideas, but uh, you might have your own ideas of how to fill the page. If you're making with somebody else, maybe um, you could start with a letter on one page and then you could hand it off to them, to somebody else, and then they can fill up your page with their own letter and you could fill up their page with the letter that you just finished and then swap back again. Okay. No, you know what? I, I want one more, one more time. So big curvy A's. There we go. And if you want to keep drawing letters on the page, you absolutely can. So what about this new page or this, this uh, new exploration with the letter? What do you notice? 
how is it different from the other letter that you used? How is it the same? Do you notice anything? Do you start seeing anything other than the letters when you're looking at your picture? If you can still really see all of the letters, again, I encourage you to go back in and keep adding more of that letter until it's really hard to tell that your page is letters. Just trying to create a whole bunch of marks made out of the letter until you start being able to look and maybe see patterns or lines or forms that give you another idea. Okay. So for me, when I'm looking at this, I see a swimming pool. The reason I see a swimming pool is because I kind of, by drawing my cursive lines on the outside, I kind of made this box here, this interlocking connected box or border around the outside. And then because of it kind of looks like with my capital A lines, kind of looks like uh, water or waves that could be going back and forth in the pool and then bubbles that are coming up from the surface. So with this idea, with this spark, with this prompt, with this starting idea, I could then go, okay, that's cool. What would this look like? If I was going to draw it without all the scribbles, I was just going to take the marks that I liked. And I don't necessarily have to draw in the alphabet letters anymore. I could draw um, what I see and maybe they don't look like the letters anymore. So for example, I could go, all right, remember I said I thought I saw a swimming pool? So I could absolutely draw the outlines like this. because we're being inspired by, we're getting ideas by doing this first practice, this first warm up. But now what I'm gonna do is I like, I liked my cursive A's. So I'm going to draw a bunch of A's within this border. going. What do you notice if you are drawing a chain of letters? I'm noticing that it is actually pretty hard for me to talk and draw at the same time and think about making sure that my letters kind of look consistent woof, as I go along. And it can be hard, even though it's the same shape over and over again, you get into a pattern. How long can you draw your letter without making a mistake? Okay, there we go. So can you see how they're the same, but they, this one, because I, I went wild and I didn't have any kind of restrictions or plans. It was like, okay, no, I like this. So this is what it could look like if, um, if I wanted to make it something that was a little cleaner. And remember how I said that I kind of saw waves here? Well, I'm not gonna do straight lines this time. I'm gonna go wavy. There we go, across my pool, right? Seeing the lines that the A did, but I could totally go A. I kind of like that. Maybe I won't cross the bar, I'll just leave them like that. So it kind of has the same shape as the A that I had there before without the line in the center. And then the last thing I said were bubbles and I kind of liked the, um, what do you call it, the, the version of the A's that I did that had the um, ascender at the top. So I'm gonna go like this, just in a couple of places. Show bubbles. Maybe the bubbles are all on the side, close to the waves. And there we go. And so from not having any ideas at all, by scribbling on the page using a bunch of letters, 
I was able to think of a picture. Let's see, add some color. And there we go. And I could keep going, drawing different lines as I get more ideas. Big thank you to the letter for giving me the idea. I'm going to do this one more time. But this time, instead of um, using my name or my favorite food, I'm going to use letters mm, for, from my cat's name. So my cat's name is uh, I'm laughing because my cat has a couple of different names. Okay, I'll use all the names that are for my cat. So cat boy is one of the names. But we also name, well, I guess I don't have to do it because it's a repeat, but I usually name or I usually call my cat Bobo. And then sometimes we say, um, oops, sometimes we say cow Bo because it's funny. So what are the unique letters? What are the letters that only happen once here? C, A, T, B. Okay, got B's a bunch of other places. Oh, C happened as well. Okay. And then O. And then Y and W. Okay. And so you could take your scissors. But I'm going to rip the paper. There we go. There's my W. to the side. This time, whew, this time what I'm going to do is I'm actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a container. So here's my little mini host. And because it's hollow on the inside, I'm going to put all my letters in there. But you could use a cup um, or you could use a container or you could make your own little envelope and put it in. And so this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, oh, I, you know what, I'm really liking this brown paper. There we go. And so this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep adding letters to my page. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to draw 26, which is the number of letters in the alphabet that I'm using. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, which is 26. So um, I'm going to take a letter because I can make up, and you could make up whatever chance game you want. You could uh, you could choose the number 26. You could uh, remember how I said I used uh, Catboy as the name uh, of the letters that I was going to use. So you could go, okay, well, because there's one, two, three, four, five, six letters, I'm only going to let myself do six marks uh, with each letter. But this one I'm going to do 26 because I decided because I get to make up the rules as I'm exploring. So the first letter I chose was T. So I'm going to do 26 T's on the page. All right, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, seven. Whoops, I went too far. <laughs> That's okay. I really got into it. All right, there's 26 T's. I'm gonna pick maybe one or two more letters. Looks like I had other things inside of my little mini host here. There you go. And then I picked an A. Okay, so now I gotta do 26 A's. So I'm gonna go A, A, A. Oh, one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and then done. <laughs> okay. So I used two letters this time. But I limited myself to the number of marks that I was going to put on the page. If you did this as well, what do you notice on your page? Don't forget, you can always turn your page around because sometimes you'll see something different from the direction that you originally drew it in. But I definitely see something. I definitely have an idea that when I started drawing my A's, I was inspired. I had, um, I had an idea of a picture that I wanted to draw. And what that picture is, is, can you see? Can you, can you guess? That's right, I saw a bunch of trees. Inside those trees, I see a bunch of apples. And I don't have to just use the marks that I did the first time. Once you have an idea, once you have a picture in mind, I could totally go in and go, no, I want some apples that are very circled. I don't need to have the A on them. Or I could go, no, I like the apples. Or sorry, with the A's, but I'm gonna do a little, um, my, the, um, oh, I can't remember the name of letters today. Uh, but the, the line on the side of the A, I'm gonna turn it up to the side so it kind of looks like there are stems on each of my apple A's. You don't have to do that, you just do circles. Once you have an idea, you totally don't have to stick with the original idea that gave you um, the inspiration. Now I can go in and keep coloring. And there we go. There are lots of ways that you can play with alphabets, and we just tried one or two ways this week. You can try different ways with me by uh, checking out last week's episode or previous episodes where we've explored alphabets on our Facebook page, YouTube, or on our website at artstarts.ca slash explores dash online. Just like I like to do every week, I'm gonna leave the camera running a little bit longer so that I can clean up my space, respect my space, and be ready to explore with you again next week. I look forward to exploring with you then. Bye for now.